Okay, let's end on tariffs. Um, this is another, uh, I know, we're, we're already at two hours, but uh, there's a lot to Trump's record, and this is only like the third of the part prep. One. Yeah, so part one, we're going to do we're gonna do a lot more on Trump's record because they're, you know, like the immigration discussion, there's a lot of good stuff coming out of this. You can hear the whole uh, thing at wearelibertarians.com. Um, ta- excuse me, tariffs. Uh, where Where's my place? Oh. Trade and raising tariffs on goods imported into the U.S. Donald Trump, a self-proclaimed, quote, tariff man, vowed to raise tariffs on goods imported into the U.S. while campaigning to become president. Any country that devalues their currency in order to take an uh, uh, this is what he said, excuse me, any country that devalues their currency in order to take unfair advantage of the United States and all of its companies who can't compete will face tariffs and taxes to stop the cheating. And when they see that, they will stop the cheating. Trump said during a campaign rally in Tampa, Florida. Trump has followed through on this promise, citing global trade alert data. Simon Evanet, professor of international trade and economic development at the University of St. Gallen, said as of June 22nd, an estimated $618 billion of U.S. imports were affected by tariff increases implemented under Trump. Essentially, He has taxed the American economy an additional $618 billion. Um, As of January 7th, 2020, the U.S. has imposed tariffs on 16.8% of imported goods measured as a share of the value of all U.S. imports. China, 2020, uh, in January 2020, a phase one deal lowered the tensions but left the tariffs. When the U.S. and China signed a trade deal at the beginning of the year, most of the tariffs remained in place. The U.S. maintained levies of up to 25% or an estimated $360 billion on U.S. imports. Even the administration conceded it fell short of original goals, describing it as phase one of the agreement. North American tariffs. In 2018, the U.S., Canada, and Mexico agreed to a deal that will govern more than $1.1 trillion in trade between the three countries. The pact, which has been slowly making its way through the legislatures of the three countries, will replace NAFTA from 1994. There are some differences, including stronger labor provisions and tougher rules on the sourcing of auto parts, but analysts say the significance remains to be seen. So he's replacing NAFTA with NAFTA and saying it's a great deal. Japan and South Korea, uh, one of Trump's first moves was to withdraw from the TPP, a proposed 12-country deal that eventually went ahead without the U.S., putting U.S. exports at a disadvantage. Trump has since claimed two bilateral agreements, one with Japan and one with South Korea, but the changes were so limited that congressional researchers said they barely qualified as trade deals. Congressional researchers said it barely qualified. It's the greatest deal. I made the greatest deal. In the case of South Korea, the most notable provision actually preserved U.S. tariffs on lightly truck duty, light truck duties. So he's saying, basically, I'm going to impose tariffs to get a great trade deal and then repeatedly puts the tariffs permanently in the trade deals, which means those trade deals have to be rene- renegotiated by a future president to remove the tariffs. With Japan, the U.S. won either levy cuts or complete elimination of $7 billion worth of agricultural goods, but this was the same access the U.S. would have received under the TPP. So in his agreement with Japan, he basically got the same deal as with TPP. He withdrew from the TPP for no advantage whatsoever based on the trade deal he uh, set with Japan. With Europe, the U.S. and Europe went through a round of tit-for-tat tariffs after the U.S. announced steel and aluminum tariffs, measures that would affect more than $10 billion worth of two-way trade. In October 2019, the U.S. imposed 25% tariffs on $7.5 billion worth of European goods, including scotch, French wine, and Italian cheese. Trump has made repeated threats to impose tariffs on European cars. He has also continued to threaten steep levies on EU goods such as French produce and retaliation for France. France's new digital services tax, which affects U.S. companies. So essentially, he is um, using the tariff system as a weapon against the people that he doesn't like, personally. There's no forethought to it. It's sort of like when FDR and and, uh, the 
book Amity Schles wrote called The Forgotten Man. Mm-hmm. She she talks about how I think it was Henry Morgenthau who's the Treasury Sector Secretary. They in the Great Depression, one of the reasons it was made worse is that he was arbitrarily setting the uh, the price of gold during the Great Depression, and FDR would literally like call the Treasury Secretary and go set it at this today. My I'm feeling lucky with two point blah blah blah. And Morgenthau said if the American people knew how FDR was doing it, which was like basically asking his friends for a fun number, like he's playing the lottery, then the American people would be outraged. And that came from his cabinet. And that's similar here, right? It's just arbitrarily using tariffs and taxing goods without any kind of strategy or eight new chess to get better trade deals. But then the trade deals he's getting are the exact same ones as the ones he withdrew from. It makes no sense. Harry. And it's 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 that that work, that side to side work that you all work with these people that do stuff like that, that just like, look, I'm moving. Look, look how much work I'm doing. I'm doing more right. work than you. Yeah. Arranging the deck tar- chairs on the Titanic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Look, I'm doing all I'm doing better work than you. You're moving really slow, but I'm actually going somewhere. I'm getting close to my goal. You know, you know it's it we all work. Well, Go ahead. I was going to say we all, because we like everyone can think through themselves and go to their jobs. It's like I work with people like that. You sure do. You sure do. Probably down the well, not down the hall anymore, but you know. <laughs> so, uh, so if you right. talk about again about the uh, um, the Great Depression too, see, people seem to forget about Smoot Hawley and how we yeah. instituted a trade, a global trade war that is the main cause of the great depression at the time so um because you know a lot of people think oh it's it was this issue or that issue but those were all centralized to countries right so why would it have been global why would there have been a global um depression and in the fact that we were instituting like um tariffs on like 50 to 60 percent of all goods that were imported uh, and the countries we were doing that to then instituted their own tariffs on stuff that we were exporting. So nobody could sell that stuff to anybody anymore. So nobody could make any money and the goods they were getting were too expensive. That caused everything to start the nosedive. Mm-hmm. That was what really prolonged that Great Depression was because we had, ba- in effect, raised taxes on everything. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, and that's the thing about Trump's. Uh, tariffs is, I think it was calculated out that it was the third largest tax increase in U.S. history. So at the beginning of his term, we got a small little tax cut that gave everybody a grand maybe uh, mm-hmm. back and then hit him with the third largest tax increase. And everybody thinks that he's, you know, this great economic hero. And all he's doing is, like I said before, talking to the Fed and getting them to manipulate the 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 money supply so that the stock market goes up which makes a lot of rich people richer meanwhile we've got like small businesses who are down 30 percent right now in in uh, achieving goal revenues while we have the top companies who are making money and increasing their their positions and you see that so that's how you see the stock market increasing because all the top companies are listed on the stock market so those numbers go up but the little guy is getting screwed yeah, and that's what always ends up happening. So, so you mentioned, uh, yeah, tariffs or taxes, like bottom line, and uh, he's taking money out of the economy. Uh, 